In a previous video I talked about modifiers being a good tool for experimenting in Blender, because of the fact that they are both descriptive and they give you immediate results, which makes it fairly easy to just try out different combinations on different meshes to see what happens. And while Geometry Note is an amazing tool, it's not very descriptive. And it's not as easy as just connecting some notes together, since a lot of the notes are dependent on things like if the geometry is a curve or not, and some notes only do things if they are used together with other specific notes. However, there is a way to create really intricate meshes very fast with geometry nodes, by using two specific nodes, and those nodes are the Extrude Mesh node and the Scale Elements node. Not only are the names of the nodes descriptive, they are also extremely easy to use. So let me show you how to turn this icosphere into something like this. Add a plane. Then head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace and press New to add a new node tree. Add an icosphere from the mesh primitives and a dual mesh node. What the dual mesh node does is that it converts the center of each face to vertices, and those vertices are then used to create new faces. Essentially, it converts faces to vertices and vertices to faces. Next, add an extrude mesh node and set the offset scale to 0.5. Then add a scale elements node and set the scale to 0.5 as well. As you can see, the scale elements node has a selection input, which means that it's possible to select specific parts of the mesh to scale. So in this case, I want to scale the newly extruded faces, but leave the rest of the mesh as it is. Luckily, the extrude mesh node provides a solution for that, in the form of the top and side outputs. By connecting the top output to the selection input, we are only selecting those specific faces to be affected by the scale elements node. Next, add another extrude mesh node, and set the offset scale to 0.9. Right now it's extruding all the existing faces equally, but I don't want this face in the middle to be extruded. Much like the Scale Elements node, the Extrude Mesh node also has a selection input, which also can be used to select specific parts of the mesh to be extruded. And in this case, we want to extrude from all faces except for the top one. So instead of using the top output of the previous Extrude Mesh node, we can use the side output to ignore the top face when extruding. Next I will make the equivalent of an inset where I create a face within an existing face and scale it down towards the center of the face. Add an extrude mesh node and set the offset scale to 0. Then add a scale elements node. Set the scale to 0 0.2, then connect the top output to the selection input. Before moving on, I also want to raise the inset face a little bit, so set the offset scale to 0 0.05. I will explain why in the next step. Add a final extrude mesh node. Set the offset scale to 0 0.1. And connect the side output of the previous extrude mesh node to the selection input. These grooves here are the reason for why I set the offset scale in the previous step to 0 0.05, because by adjusting that value, you can change the size of them. It also adds some extra details to other parts of the mesh. And there you have it. With just a couple of extrude and scale nodes, we have turned an icosphere into a mesh that looks like an alien reactor or something. And of course, since this setup is fully customizable, you can experiment with the values of each of the nodes to get wildly different results. Also, removing the dual mesh node will greatly affect the final result. One thing that I like to do with detailed meshes like this is to add a material that uses ambient occlusion to create some extra depth and detail. Add a material in the Materials tab. Then add a set material node in the node tree. 
and select the material in a dropdown. I'm using Cycles, but if you're using Eevee, make sure that Ambient Occlusion is enabled in the Render Settings tab. Head over to the Shading Workspace and add an Ambient Occlusion node. Then connect the AO output to the base color of the principal BSDF. Ambient Occlusion is essentially the amount of direct lighting that any given point on the mesh receives. Of course, this value can be used in many different ways. For example, you can change the colors of the Ambient Occlusion node with a color ramp to create any color gradient that you want. And you can even use it to make the inner parts of the mesh glow. I think that looks pretty nice, so let's set up a quick scene for rendering. Add a camera. And press Alt and G to reset its location. Then press Alt and R to reset its rotation. Press N to show the item properties. Set the location X to 16. Then set rotation X and C to 90. And in the camera properties tab, Set the focal length to 120. Add a plane and scale it up and position it under the mesh in edit mode. Select this edge of the plane and press E, then C, and extrude it upwards. Then select this edge here and press Ctrl B to bevel it. And use the scroll wheel to add more segments. Then exit edit mode and right click and select shade smooth. Add an area light. And in the light properties, set the power to 200 watts. And the size to 2.5. Then position it above and to the right of the mesh. And rotate the light so that it points towards the center. Duplicate the light and position it on the other side. And in the light properties, Set the power to 300, and the size to 1. This is a scene setup that I decided to go with, but using different light configurations and camera angles can create completely different looks and atmospheres. Head over to the compositing workspace and enable use nodes. Add a lens distortion node and enable fit. Then set the distort value to 0.01 and the dispersion value to 0.025. Then in the render properties tab, set the render max samples to 512. Then press F12 to render. And that's about it. This was just one example of what you can do with the extrude mesh node and the scale elements node. But hopefully it gave you some insight into how you can go about creating complex meshes with very little effort. See you next time.